300 Raritan Center Parkway, Edison, New Jersey. The zip code is 08818. Coming up next on C-SPAN 2, we take you to the Justice Department for today's swearing-in of Attorney General William Barr. You'll hear remarks from President Bush and from Mr. Barr, who has served as Acting Attorney General since Richard Thornburg resigned to run for the United States Senate. Mr. Barr was confirmed by the Senate last Wednesday after less than 20 minutes of debate on the Senate floor. gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by the Honorable and Mrs. William Barr. Please be seated. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. I'm George Terwilliger. Mr. President, honored guests, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the swearing in of William Pelham Barr as the 77th Attorney General of the United States of America. I would ask that you please rise for the presentation of the colors, for the singing of our national anthem, and remain standing for the invocation.
At this time, I would ask His Excellency, the Most Reverend Thomas Daly, Bishop of the Diocese of, Dio Diocese of Brooklyn, to lead us in the invocation. Let us pray. God of truth, justice, love, and freedom, help us to realize in all our thoughts and actions the basic fundamental principle of our nation that all are created equal and share equal human dignity. Help us, and most especially our new Attorney General, William Barr, to the full realization that justice in public life is not simply the protection of self-interest or individual independence, but a structured order of public life by which we realize our worth as persons together. Through your divine inspiration, help us, and especially our new Attorney General, to know that there can be no secure justice for an individual person or a single group, so long as there is not justice for all. Give Attorney General Barr the strength and the courage to implement justice for every single human being from the moment of conception to natural demise, to link the law with an awareness of the dignity of every single human being, and thus serve man's innate desire to be free and live in peace. May our new Attorney General and all of his dedicated collaborators in the Department of Justice serve our President well. And in his practice of justice, serve our country and all its citizens well. Surely they deserve no less. Dear God, on this glorious day so significant for our nation's history, bless Attorney General Barr his lovely wife Chrissy, his children and family, and all of his colleagues in the Department of Justice. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the President of the United States. Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Hey, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Sir. Please be seated and Thank you all very much for that welcome. May I... Uh, thank you all and thank you, George, and Mr. Attorney General, distinguished members of the Cabinet, members of Congress who are with us here today. I spot Senator Thurman, Senator Hatch, uh, members of the White House staff, and Bishop Daly, to you, sir, ladies and gentlemen. Let me uh, offer congratulations to Bill Barr and a warm welcome and best wishes to his wife, uh, Chris, and to these three wonderful daughters here with whom I had the pleasure to visit just a few minutes ago. Uh, may I salute Mr. and Mrs. Barr, Bill's parents here in the front row, and many, many other family and friends that are here for this happy occasion. This is my kind of Barr Association. <laughs> I knew it. I, I knew it. I debated. I debated. And there's Senator Kennedy, Ted. I didn't see you earlier. Welcome, sir. I debated whether to try that one. I, I, I'd like to take it over. <laughs> like a replay. Time out. Uh, today, America gives new responsibilities uh, to a young man of outstanding character and achievement. As always, uh, Shakespeare's words, uh, words help us sum up the man, young in limb, in judgments old. 
The newspapers report Bill Barr was giving Eisenhower for president speeches when he was in kindergarten. <laughs> and his parents uh, passed along the word that young Bill was discoursing about separation of powers before he gave up his pacifier. So I am, I am proud uh, to welcome Bill Barr to this cabinet, and he will make our country proud of his work as Attorney General of the United States. He offers a model of thoughtfulness and hard work for all young Americans. And when I first met him, Bill was uh, holding down a demanding job in the Legislative Affairs Office at uh, CIA. And at night, he was going to law school. And as a lawyer in private practice and in government service, he has shown unstinting commitment to excellence and to fairness. As the head of the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel, and as a key participant in our National Security Council deliberations, he has never hesitated, Bill Barr has never hesitated uh, to speak his mind and to offer honest, solid legal advice. As Deputy Attorney General and then Acting Attorney General, he has fostered a strong sense of teamwork that draws the best out of our professionals at the Justice Department. Uh, Bill's leadership has brought about recent successes in, in prosecuting savings and loan fraud, in resolving the Talladega hostage crisis, and indicting the terrorists who plotted uh, the Pan Am bombing. Under our new Attorney General, the Justice Department has four major priorities. First, keep on with the fight against drugs. We're winning some battles. There are some encouraging statistics out there, but we haven't won this war, not yet. We'll keep putting our best efforts into the fight for the lives and well-being of our young people. That's what's at stake here. Second, we are continuing and we'll intensify our efforts against violent crime. In the federal government, we're determined to help state and local authorities combat violent criminals. Bill Barr's leadership in particular will help us with a new crackdown against career criminals who use firearms, and he'll redouble our efforts to help victims and witnesses. Third, our administration will work vigorously to enforce civil rights laws. We will support our fellow Americans' efforts to promote fairness and harmony, and we will join forces to fight the cancer of discrimination. And finally, Bill Barr and his team will roll up their sleeves to heighten the attack against white-collar crime. We're determined to strengthen the people's protections against fraud in financial institutions, insurance, and government pr procurement. Uh, we'll turn the full force of the law against con, con artists who steal people's savings. And we'll do the same to anyone from abroad who tries to rob our in inventors and our investors of what is rightfully theirs. Uh, we won't relax until Congress gives us the tools we need to fight crime. Uh, I ask for an end to frivolous habeas corpus appeals that waste time prosecutors should be spending on new cases. Uh, Congress, in my view, has ignored that urgent need. I ask for legislation assuring that needless technicalities will not cause evidence to be thrown out when police officers act in good faith. And Congress has ignored us on this one too. I ask Congress to make it easier to prosecute rapists and child molesters. And again, uh, fail to, failure to act. And I ask for meaningful federal death penalty authority. And once again, uh, I am not satisfied. Uh, Congress has failed to deliver. The conference committee's bill that's up there now, in my view, is so weak and so soft on criminals that I'll have to veto it if it reaches my desk. Uh, this isn't a partisan issue. It's a matter of common sense. And it's a question of who is in touch with our state and local law enforcement authorities out there on the front lines. And at last count, I've heard from 31 of our state's attorney generals, Democrats and Republicans, who say they will stand by me in the position I have taken. Uh, beyond the critical issues of crime and drugs and civil rights enforcement, we need civil justice reform. 
Bill Barr will help us straighten out a civil litigation system that is spun out of control. Uh, we've become the most litigious society in the world, and that causes a painful, costly drain on our economy, on our professions, and ultimately on the civility we need to hold society together. A bill has been and will remain a stalwart in our efforts for civil justice reform. I am confident that Bill Barr possesses an abundance uh, of every quality that makes a great attorney general. He is tough, he is fair-minded, a man of integrity, of intense dedication. And uh, it's true that I've ordered Bill to go all out in fighting crime, but I've left the details to him. It's altogether his idea uh, to try to drive drug dealers out of our neighborhoods by playing his bagpipe. Uh, <laughs> we, constitutional question has been raised on that one, violating the Eighth Amendment, cruel and unusual, <laughs> unusual punishment. But for 15 years, I've been honored to know this good man, and I've been deeply impressed by his ability, uh, by his love of country, uh, and of his profession. And now it is my honor to present uh, Judge Lawrence Silberman, who will administer the oath of office to the 77th Attorney General of the United States. Would you raise your right hand, please? Repeat after me. I, William P. Barr. I, William P. Barr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office on which I am about to enter. Of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you for coming over to the Department of Justice today and for your kind remarks. And thank you, Bishop Daly, for your invocation and Judge Silberman for administering the oath. And thank you all for coming, distinguished members of the judiciary, my colleagues in the cabinet and in the administration. Senator Thurman, Senator Kennedy, and other distinguished members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, my colleagues in state and local law enforcement and this great department, my distinguished predecessor, General Civiletti, and my good friends. I know how busy all of you are, and many of you have traveled a great distance to be here. And I wish I could recognize each individual here, but let me just say that I am profoundly grateful that each of you has taken the time to mark this occasion with me today. And today is primarily a day for me to express appreciation. And first, I would like to thank the President for having selected me as his Attorney General. Serving as Attorney General is a great privilege at any time, but it is a particular honor to serve a President like you who have done so much for law enforcement. Across the nation, law enforcement officials at all levels agree on a bipartisan basis that there has never been a president who has been more supportive of law enforcement than you. You. 
your call today, Mr. President, for a real crime bill, rather than a bill that actually weakens existing law, yet again demonstrates your commitment to the cause of combating crime. And so I know I speak for all the federal, state, and local law enforcement officials here today and thousands more across the country in thanking you for your leadership. <clears throat> I have other thanks to give today. None of us can ever hope to repay the debt that we owe our parents, but today especially, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to my parents who are here, Donald and Mary Barr, for all they have done for me, for all they have taught me, for their sacrifice, their love, and their support. And I would like to thank my wife, Chris, for her patience, her unconditional support, and her big heart, and most of all, her sense of humor and perspective. Through our 18 years of marriage, Chris has lived on a series of my promises that have kept things in a state of perpetual deferral. <clears throat> when we started our marriage and I was in law school, night law school for four years, I would say, Chris, just let me get this degree under my belt and then we can settle down and to a normal life. And then the following year when I was clerking for Judge Wilkie, I would say, Chris, just one more year of this all out effort and then we can let our hair down a little bit. And the following year, when I was starting in private practice, I said, Chris, let me just get my sea legs at the firm, get established, and then we can relax a bit. And on and on. Well, today, Chris, in front of all these people, <clears throat> I'm going to make a solemn promise. Just let me get this attorney generalship under my belt, and things will be different from here on in. <clears throat> I'd also like to say something about my children, Mary, Patricia, and Meg. I'm proud of each of them, and just by being themselves every day, they remind me of what is truly important in life. And finally, I would like to express my appreciation to all my family and my friends and my colleagues who are here today, from the old neighborhood, from my bagpipe band, from whom you will be hearing shortly, <laughs> even if it is cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> From my high school, from my college, from law school, from private practice, from CIA, from the White House, from here at the department. Thank you all for your friendship and your support and for teaching me about life, about the law, and about loyalty. Mr. President, when I met with you about this nomination, you said the most important thing for you was to have, a, to have the law administered fairly and even-handedly. To have the Department of Justice run with professionalism and integrity. That was your charge to me. And I pledge to you today that I will do all in my power to fulfill that responsibility. As we enter the 1990s, our law enforcement mission at the Department is a broad and challenging one. It is our responsibility to prosecute the war against drug trafficking, to assist state and local law enforcement in combating the scourge of violent crime, to uphold the civil rights of all Americans, to protect the integrity of our economic system against those who would subvert it by fraud or deceit, to protect the physical environment and natural resources of our nation, to maintain the integrity of our borders, and to safeguard our political institutions from corruption. And in meeting these challenges, we as a nation are fortunate to have in this department thousands of dedicated men and women who day in and day out, without much fanfare and often with little recognition, do the tough job of upholding the law. They do so with the utmost competence, professionalism, and integrity. They work hard, often at great personal sacrifice, and I am proud to be associated with the men and women of this great department, and I am honored to lead them. And as I said at my confirmation hearings, when I have completed my service here, Mr. President, I hope it will be said that I upheld the law and that I left this institution a better and stronger place. Thank you again, Mr. President, and God bless you all.
If you'd like more information on this swearing-in ceremony, write to the Department of Justice at 10th Street and Constitution Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20530.